Sicily 2, part of the Operational Combat series by Multiman Publishing and the gamers I'm just taking um, oh, I'm just taking care of. Um, so the Axis portion of turn one. Um, got quite a difficult job actually, the Axis. These these groups that they've got, these count groups, um, aren't as this one's potent, but this one isn't as potent as it might have appeared and <coughs> I actually looked at what they could have got into an overrun um, against this American mechanized unit sat here having captured this airbase and they could have the best they could have managed was a th would be a three to one attack on that um, and that would have cost about two and a half supply and would have been pretty risky you know they'd have been risking losing it getting a bad um, surprise roll and and um, even three to one in the open isn't that compelling for two and a half supply. And so it made the idea, and I've also played the the, the sort of half turn scenario where the, the Germans try and counterattack down into Geller and Licata, and, and that prompted me to think it was a waste of time and effort and supply. Um, and so, um, I'm now thinking that they, the Axis, actually want to exploit um, this mountainous terrain, which is very good in defence, and the multi-terrain hexes, where you can you can take the bonuses of clear terrain for your own armour and mech, and force the enemy to use the all the penalties of the mountains or whatever. This kind of terrain is looks great if you can organise a defence on it. Um, so they're going to try and do that instead, uh, I think, try and block these roads and exploit the terrain rules and the advantages it can give defenders um, to maximum advantage as, as best they can. Um, if you look at their position through here, it, they've got lots of troops up here. It's very dependent long term on the, this, these rail lines which run through here. And run through here and obviously that makes this area south of Catania where Primusol Bridge is extremely important because it's the it's what keeps this rail line open especially if later on um, the Palermo area gets taken and this rail junction falls or this road in this area gets captured this rail line can be cut and suddenly there's no way of tracing supply in here and, and the HQ in here that's currently feeding everything um, with with supply for combat and so on um, is in trouble. So um, the withdrawal from this area has to be fairly carefully executed. Uh, if you know if the if the Axis are going to defend the mountains, they've also got to be prepared to defend their supply lines to the mountains and, and that, that will be the battleground then. So not quite sure what I'm doing with these in here. Um, I thought therefore that I'd take a look at this Catania, um, Primusol Bridge, Lentini area here, a little town of Lentini in here and see what we could do to start constructing some defense along these river lines here and here and round here there's another nice looking river line up here that we might use to defend this sort of area although it's a bit too far back if we defend behind this river we might have lost the railway but you know um those are the kind of things i'm looking at at the moment anyway um the germans rolled um some armor and uh, mechanized round this power drop was uh, i'd forgotten that the um allies had a spare um, transport and conscious of the fact that uh, they need to drop five units from both of their airborne divisions on the first two turns and they'd only done two of the Commonwealth I made another power drop may it try to drop him in here I think rolled two ones and he scattered to here made the drop successfully anyway um, that's why uh, a random Commonwealth unit is now sort of over here um, and so the Axis have just rolled some armour and mechanised round here with a 5 to 1 overrun attack, made a great surprise roll, got a 9 which is what they needed for surprise and just got a 6 column shift so I'm about to roll out um, this combat on the 13 to 1 table which is as good as it gets on in OCS and this is going to look particularly unpleasant um, for the Allies in fact, it's almost certain doom
uh, for that airborne unit. Let's see what we get. We get a three on the 13 to one. Well, they've got a great surprise roll and a terrible combat roll, but a three is attacker option one, defender loss one, option one. So the attackers will simply take the option and retreat um, a, a hex. That almost sits them down to the ground, to be honest, because it's where they wanted to be. And the defender is um, the defender has to take a loss. Wouldn't have to execute the option because the attacker had retreated, but the loss one means that they're they're uh, destroyed anyway. And so what we will end up with uh, is these German uh, the the mech that was rolling around and the armor back in back along the road here, having retreated. But unfortunately, this um, airborne unit having been destroyed. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, and that's uh, that's some more defences added to this river line zone, which is what they wanted. Um, and we will carry on, uh, carry on, uh, trying to make. Uh, sensible decisions for the German in defending this the Germans uh, axis defending this Catania region and then I'm hoping that having seen what kind of defense we can muster here that will that will help inform what we do with these groups whether we try and roll them like up through these tracks and 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 prepare another line of defense in here perhaps which is looking um, a not bad option at the moment, um, you know, move some of this stuff. I've already actually moved some units round up that track, um, but we might try and bring some round here as well. Anyway, lots to think about um, as I try and arrange some sort of um, axis resistance. Okay, here is this lead to a few rules mishaps to um, talk through. Um, for anyone following along, um, so the probably the the most significant in terms of you know where the the board state is the fact that stuff coming off landing craft is only supposed to have half its movement allowance. Um, now this may appear to be a serious oops in one respect, but actually given what's happened in the first turn, you know stuff has stayed. Um, close um, to to landing zones to protect um, protect ports, protect supply, to protect transports, to protect landing craft, and so on. So actually, I don't think the final position for either the British or the Americans is. It's there were probably things that are pushing it in terms of where they got to in the movement stage because they did some overruns. But I think had with they instead stopped short of Syracuse and then attacked in the combat stage, they'd have probably, uh, you know, and we'd got we'd have got the same combat result and we'd have ended up because there there'd have been a surrender and bang and we'd have ended up in the same place. Possibly there are some situations where actually the Allies have w ob obtained exploitation results, which they would have got had they paused and waited till the combat phase, which they missed out on because you don't get them when you're overrunning. You can't get an exploitation marker for an overrun attack. So I think this has probably evened itself out and we would have ended up roughly here in the end of combat rather than the end of the movement phase because um, I got here in movement and then didn't really have any combats to do. But for example, we, I'd have probably had to do a combat in here um, in the combat phase rather than as an overrun. And likewise, the, the attack into Syracuse would probably have had to wait till the com um, combat phase. And that may have mean that I've just got a couple of special forces or at least one special force a bit further up here than I could, could would have done. Although these paras I got correct because they airdropped and then did a half move. So I think maybe this guy here is a bit further forward than he should be. But I think the rest of it is pretty much OK. I'm comfortable that the British could have legally got into this situation without too much trouble. Likewise, for the Americans, they also stayed pretty heavily packed around to protect their HQ, their supply sources, their ports and so on. Um, this guy along here did an, um, would probably again have had to do a combat rather than an overrun, but is likely to have ended up in much the same place. 
the um, airdropped stuff got its half move um, as it should have done, so I, I did everything legally with them. Not too worried about that, but it's worth noting that you should only have a half move. Um, it was also uh, pointed out that I hadn't put port damage, so every port um, should roll for a, a, a basically should take a D3's worth of hits at the start of the game. So you go around and roll a six sided dice and give it a D, put a D3 port damage on every port to reduce its capacity slightly. Both, um, both, both these ones on the south coast and the north coast, the Germans probably got slightly the worse of it actually. So. Um, the Allies did okay. There is quite a lot of port damage on the Carter here, the main port that the Americans are using. Um, you can repair ports, and they've got some engineers and an HQ that could do it. Um, obviously, there'll be some bombing, uh, probably some fairly regular bombing attacks on on ports to try and you know knock knock their capacity down. So. Um, that's another thing. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the other thing um, was that um, the other, and this is also quite uh, could could be quite an impactful error, is that I um, charged uh, Allied units supply for fueling um, as they came off the landing craft. I made them fuel. And they shouldn't have had to do that. They shouldn't have had to pay that fuel cost. You're, you're considered fueled for the turn if you come off a landing craft. So these guys here, these guys here, the two armoured guys in here, these guys up here. Um, that lot all paid, that lot all paid um, about five supply just for the just for the pleasure of moving, which it needn't have paid. And similarly, you know, one, two, three at least four American units and possibly more um, paid supply to move, um, which they didn't need to, uh, coming off their uh, landing as well. So, um, yeah, all in all, all's fair in love and war. It's it's too complex to try and reverse all this stuff. And to, and, and once you start, how, how do you know what you've done is balanced or blah, blah, blah. I think you just have to um, shrug and get on with it. I'm not I'm not repairing any of these, any of these um, uh, rules sort of mess ups <clears throat> per se. I'm just pointing them out for anyone wanting to get things right in the future and wondering how I managed to do certain things or why I'm doing certain things or why I haven't got supply left in a couple of turns time. Um, pro probably because I made a mistake somewhere and paid it when I shouldn't have. Anyway, um, I still think uh, we're in a, you know, the Allied, the Allied opening turn It is entirely reasonable in terms of its end point, even if we got here by a slightly, a slightly obscure, obscure route or a slightly illegal fashion. I think the end point's perfectly viable, perfectly acceptable and happy to play on from, from where they got to, which is just as well, because I was already three quarters of the way through the German term when someone pointed some of these things out on YouTube, for which I am grateful. Um, anyway, uh, I will uh, stop talking about Allied rules, errors, and uh, talk about the Germans in a bit. Okay, the Axis turn then, here, um, turn one of Sicily 2. Um, the Axis just sent an airstrike against Licata, didn't hit a damn thing, didn't lose any planes though in the process from the flak, and likewise they sent um, some bombers against Syracuse, didn't hit a thing there either, um, didn't lose any planes in the process, so um, pretty ineffectual bombing runs though against the ports. On the ground, um, so you can see quite a collection now of um, Axis forces forming um, along this sort of Lentini river line here and a separate river, river line here. The, so the Germans are, you know, German stroke axis are um, wanting to defend these these sort of nice defensible river lines leading into um, towards Catania. Um, and have managed to find sort of stuff to throw in the way, roughly speaking. And they've got more of this camp group here sort of trickling its way round as well. We, I've decided against some sort of brazen um, balls or glory kind of um, counter-attack into these American forces. It just 
I don't know, something about it just looked... I, when I looked at what the Germans could put into this American American unit here as an attack, three to one attack, using burning a lot of their supply, I just thought, what chance have they got getting through a, a you know a 24 strength infantry division and another 22 strength infantry division over here? It just didn't really stack up to something viable, um, especially with a second wave of Americans you know likely to land in the near future. It all just looked like they were going to push forward at the end to right at the outer limits of their own supply and logistics network and then find themselves in a whole heap of trouble um and you know they could find themselves quickly in trouble anyway um so i figured it was best for them to try and withdraw carefully or hopefully carefully towards the mountains and start setting up combinations of infantry and you know leg units and artillery support um back where you know american armor couldn't have advantages and and it's high quality infantry could perhaps perhaps dig in and fight with artillery support um and where you know uh, spread out more thinly along you know roads which the only real way to get through these mountains and and in spreading out more thinly reduce the um, reduce the threat from air especially given the limited number of airstrikes that both sides are allowed in the game so I thought you know perhaps we could nullify some of the allied air advantage as well if we spread out thin and didn't give them really nice um, stacks to to try and um, to try and blow up. Um, so the count, this count proof Kerner has sort of spread itself out into the mountains here um, with some artillery and, and rocket units at the back here and various infantry units dotted in here. And although this guy's DG, there's a nice, you know, there's a small infantry battalion there, but an, an anti tank gun battalion there with a big defensive combat factor, even if it's not offensive and it's in, you know, mountainous terrain. It's going to be hopefully reasonably challenging to dig out with some mechanised support just in behind it. And then similarly up here, a couple more, a couple more, another unit um, protecting some supply in there, and then some another unit and some artillery support, and so on. So we're trying to trying to just find uh, a way to pull back, defend this rail line, defend the roads, and not expose ourselves to. Um, to sort of overruns and overwhelming um, attacks from American armour. Um, and like I say, we've sent some a lot of this group back round here to aid the defence of this river line, which they still haven't got quite enough units to, um, to, to manage. We dropped um, some uh, paras in here, the four uh, Falschermjägers, however you pronounce that, Falschermjägers, in here um, to defend the river line, and they're all in their move mode at the moment, but they're high quality units that are going to get bolstered by by this um, HG Panzer, with some artillery in behind, some air around it, we're hoping that we can create quite a nice defensive block here, and uh, and just slowly give ground in the middle here and and defend this corner and just make the Americans and so on waste time over there trying to take that lot making it as as unpleasant as possible. So um, yeah, it's a delaying action rather than a, a mad counterattack at the moment. Um, the Germans do have more reinforcements to arrive, um, but we'll. Um, I'd rather add them to solid positions than have frittered away troops on counterattacks and then find that, you know, I'm just sort of plugging holes with them. So um, that's where we are. Uh, the Germans have pretty much done their first turn. I don't think they've got any combats to run. I think they've done their they've done their modes, their moves. They've done their air barrages. Um, they're all in supply as far as I can tell. There's going to be no reaction or combat phases and no exploitation phase, so they'll just be on cleanup, removing these DGs and um, and flipping over any fueled markers that they might have. So I'll have a quick look for those, and we'll be into turn two. So I'm just coming into the second turn here in Sicily 2 by MMP. Um, <clears throat> The Allies won initiative for this turn, 
and have elected to go first. Um, that's just so that they can try and get some more reinforcements onto the map and solidify their position a bit. Um, it was less pressing than if the Germans had made this sort of counter-attack into the American positions, but the Germans would really have been gambling then on winning initiative to make that a really punishing and sort of dangerous sort of attack and having lost initiative, they're probably quite glad, or they are feeling quite glad, that they didn't go ahead and compromise their situation too badly. Um, equally, well, equally, the Allies could have put the Germans in again, but it felt like it was giving them perhaps too much opportunity to fortify this area, which the Allies are hoping to find sufficient troops to have a crack at before it just becomes really dangerous. Um, but they actually elected to to go again, just so that they could perhaps have a crack at Augusta. And um, and perhaps attack across this river line here and start building a a, a, a breakout around the coast before um, the the uh, Axis put too much more thought and effort into defending it. Um, so that's where where we're at. Um, I've spent seven of the eight shipping allowance that the Allies get on moving supply and some reinforcements out of the um, Tunisia box, which interestingly doesn't tell you it has a port in it and so you end up with units in here that are according to the rules of the game illegal to move out of here such as this um, tracked artillery unit uh, as as per the rules of the game you couldn't actually ever get that out um, because it can't be shipped out by air because it's tracked and you can only move stuff with leg movement points in move mode by air and you couldn't get it out by sea because there's no apparently no sea connection so um, yeah you have to dig around and find some errata to work out what to do with all the tracked units in there and so on and it's all a bit painful anyway they've spent seven they've got one yeah they've got one uh, supply points worth of sh available shipping left and I don't think they've got any points that can they've got any ports that can take any more capacity so they're going to have to capture some ports before they can they can ship anything else in but perhaps they can take Augusta which currently has a capacity of 2T okay so maybe they could then ship in a cup of tea um, into uh, Augusta here that might be one option who knows what else um, we've moved all our aircraft back into active positions and um, we've also moved all the landing craft that uh, brought stuff onto the island back into this floating forces boxes here. But we do have one 2SP landing craft all that, that starts in this box that we could, um, lo could load up and, and ship out. Um, potentially could have done that last turn, but I, I don't understand why... Um, yeah, quite understand why we didn't. Uh, having said that, so in the historical scenario uh, for the uh, Primasol Bridge scenario, the 23rd um, Armoured, I think this is the Commonwealth 23rd Armoured, is already on the map for turn two. And if that's a historical scenario, I don't understand quite why the historical setup would not also get it onto the map for turn two. But apparently you have to take care of that yourself somehow so um, I may ship in the 23rd armoured or as much of it as I can fit on that landing craft so that we get something close to the to the setup for Brimasol Bridge um, it's all a bit confusing the, the you know playing the smaller scenarios and then coming into the campaign game when the when they don't sort of match up with each other you think well I, I thought I was running some sort of training exercise for that scenario and actually the situation you end up with in the historical game is so far different and so 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 much more complex that 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 the scenarios really don't help you that much apart from maybe learning some of the geography and so on anyway enough of that griping um we are uh, coming into turn two i'm through aircraft refit reinforcement and we're just coming into the early stages of sort of mode determination and movement phase the mode of movement segment where we're we're shipping stuff about at the moment but not yet making aggressive moves with the with the actual ground forces right um, I'm going to stop this here and do turn two proper on um, the next uh, video.